Bill Bachman here for VicForEarth.com. We have yet another amazingly incredible hybrid. This one is the Tutacha. Now, you might have also seen my Tachita hybrid, and this is the same kind of thing, but we're scrambling it once more. Both of them are derivatives of the flam accent, right? If here are your three notes, you have a flam accent is cha-ta-ta, cha-ta-ta. Now, if we move that flam to two, we have ta-cha-ta, ta-cha-ta. Right? Now, if we move the flam to three, ta-da-cha, ta-da-cha, okay? So all these are our inversions of flam accents. So if you know your flam accents, no, you don't even have a head start on this because the techniques are totally different to play them and the sounds are totally different. The whole thing, yeah, you'll see. So here are your tutuches. Uh, and incidentally, I know this is going by pretty quick. It's a lot to take in. But one of the resources I've put together for y'all is my website, drumworkout.com, where there's a ton of lessons and actual workouts where you can get your pad and sticks, play along with me. You can put your screen next to my screen and make it match. So it's a great way to really take the time and get a lot of reps, checking it the whole time to make sure you're doing it just right. So if you're trying to play that with the four basic strokes, the full, down, tap, up, a la accent tap exercises, you can play it slowly, no problem. Okay, but as you try to get fast, your hands are gonna tighten up. So watch this, I'll speed it up and I'll try to maintain that four basic strokes approach. The whole thing stiffens up and falls apart. The reason is, is I'm asking too much of my hands to play an upstroke. So if you break it down and you look at what each hand plays, you have, now take your hand away. Right, so you have two taps preceding that accent. So that leaves us with not much time to pick up the stick with the hand. So instead of doing that, we're going to throw the hand and stick up via a molar whipping stroke from the forearm. This is one of those times where your hand has to go completely dead and loose because engaging any wrist muscles stiffens up and ruins the effect of the whip. So the fast tempos technique slowly will look like this. Now without doing a full lesson on molar whipping strokes, think about playing an imaginary drum up here and you do that, okay? You do not lead with the bead, okay? With wrist turn, the bead is the first thing to move. With molar, the bead is the last thing to move as it gets dragged up and whipped back down. So if you play like that, you know, you come back like you're cracking a whip and you feel that effect, that's what you're going for. So take that motion, again, forget everything you may have ever learned in drumline, and we're going to get all floppy, loosey-goosey and whip this. Up, up, up. So you can see that nice doggy paw as the arm comes up and everything just goes limp and hangs, and then whoosh, there we are, right? If you know how to do this, oh yeah, that thing, that's your molar whipping effect right there, okay? So practice this along with your favorite CDs, maybe some Spoke of Shadows, something like that, and get those reps and play sort of a large scale motion using that molar whip stroke. Now this is what I call the molar whip and stop because we do whip and then bop, we sort of stop the stick low because you have time to stop it and the next note you're gonna play is gonna be nice and low. So here we definitely do want accurate stick heights because there's no reason, unlike the touchita where we had to no chop, flop and drop, here we can actually, we can get that effect going on. So you can see that as I speed up, the molar whipping motion is just gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. Right? So it starts to look like a little flinch or twitch of the wrist, but it's actually that forearm throwing down. One of the many reasons I'm a proponent of playing at about a 10 degree angle to the drum is it gives you room to drop down for finger control. So here, all those little notes, you're gonna have to dribble them with fingers because you don't want to just over manhandle things with your wrist. 
So as your hand is dropped down and your finger are playing those two little taps, you just go pow like that. And by throwing the forearm down, it's at that point, it's almost not as much of a whip as it is the palm of your hand bumping the butt end of the stick and just kicking the front end up. So that's how you create stick height in a hurry without having to pick up the stick. It's like magic, except it's not at all. So that is your tachita or tadacha. Make sure that the downstroke points down. And that's how it's going to work. So once you get that together, you can do all kinds of stuff with it and add little ornaments into it. So if you think about the basic shopping spree, you have flam drags, cheese, and flam five. Those are kind of the most common kind of three that you start with. So if I keep the accent and flam on the downbeat, you have this. Okay, now if we shift all that, so instead of cha da da, it's ta da cha, as you sort of rearrange everything, you're gonna have this. And there you go. So there's your tadacha with a few ornaments on it for fun and good times. So learn it the smart way. A massive amount of reps on that molar whip and stop motion and suddenly it'll be easy. Um, that did look like hard rudimental stuff, right? But once you learn that hand motion, honestly, it's easy. I teach on Skype. I have students all over the world. I got drum set students that have no real interest in rudimental drumming particularly, but they've played that. They don't know it's hard, they just know that motion. So if you really learn all those molar motions, you'll be amazed how a lot of things, oh, that's easy, isn't it? So there you go. Practice smart, and I'll see you next time.